Let's talk about the zero vector. We know that when we write vectors, you can write them using their components, right? And if you have a vector that looks like this, where each of the numbers are zero, that could happen, right? Each of these are normally, you know, different numbers could be positive or negative. But if they're both zero, then this is what we refer to as the zero vector. I could also write this like this, zero i plus zero j. This is also the zero vector. Now, what does this vector actually look like? Well, these first numbers here usually tell us how far we go to the right or to the left, and the second number tells us how far we go up or down, right? And then the actual vector we have is the vector that goes from where we started to where we end up. That's the actual vector. But if these dimensions are both zero, if this is a length of zero and this is a length of zero, well, then you're not really going to the right or left. You're not really going up or down. You're just staying at that initial point. So the zero vector actually looks like this. Okay. So if I said that, you know, these things up here are equal to vector A, then if I draw vector A, vector A is just going to look like a point. And that's the idea. A zero vector is a vector that looks like a point because that's all it is. It hasn't moved off of that initial point. And if you take the magnitude of that vector, the magnitude of that vector is zero, right? Because the length of the vector you have is just zero. It doesn't have a length because it hasn't moved off of that initial starting point. That's what the zero vector is. Now, the zero vector comes into play later on with different concepts, um, but you should know that the zero vector is something you can get as a result. So let's say, for example, that you have vector b, and vector b is equal to 3, 2. And then you have vector c, and vector c is equal to negative 3, negative 2. And you decide you want to add these two vectors together. Well, there's different ways you can do it. You can do it by using the numbers themselves, right? You can say that when you add these two things together, vector b plus vector c, as an answer, you're going to get 3 plus negative 3. And then you're going to get 2 plus negative 2. And if you add those together, you're going to get 0 and 0. And you'll see, oh, my answer is the 0 vector, right? But a way to think about this visually is to actually sketch out each of these two vectors. So vector b looks something like this. It moves 3 to the right and up 2, so it's going to look something like this. If you add vector c to that, vector c goes 3 to the left and down 2, so vector c would look something like this. That's your vector c. And when you add them tip to tail, you end up being at the same spot that you started at. And so the resultant vector you get, it's really just a point, right? It's a vector that has a magnitude of zero. It's a zero vector. So this is what the zero vector is. It can be shown as the result of one vector plus another when those two vectors are opposites of one another, right? You travel in one direction, the vector you add to that cancels that out. It goes right back to where you started. And the resultant vector is what we call the zero vector. So just be aware that the zero vector exists as a concept, right? It's just a vector that hasn't moved anywhere. It has a magnitude of zero, and it looks just like a point.